Lidocaine and a head bleed? Are you what, talking defined head bleed? What do you mean? If you have that patient that comes in, you're going to tube them, and it looks like, hey, they possibly have, you know, a head bleed or something with an increase in cranial pressure. What's your lidocaine dosing, and which percentage? She's talking about pre treatment. Pre -treatment. You're talking about pre treatment for intubation. Uh, honestly, I'll have to double check that. I thought it was one. 1.5. But the, but uh, so so lidocaine in, in RSI for the patient who has traumatic head injury. Um, I cannot cite the study off the top of my head, but I know that there is some evidence that is developing to suggest lidocaine and has been developing for a while that lidocaine is not helpful. Um, uh, alternatively, fentanyl, large bowls, uh, large dose fentanyl, and, I, and it's on, on on the order of. Uh, if my memory serves correct, yes. it might be on the order of two to three per, per kilo. It's very high. Three per kilo. Yeah, three per kilo. So it's very high. Um, and that seems to work a little better than mitocaine, and I'm shifting my practice that way. Although it's hard to give that. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing about giving that much fentanyl is it can cause some dynamic consequences. Yeah. It's some of the worst things for head injured patients. So it's high to high to attention. So, yeah, I think the caveat being yeah, that if they have isolated blunt head trauma, then I, I feel a little more comfortable. If they have multi uh, organ trauma and they're hypertensive and they present, you got a problem. You know, the, the, you, you don't have to worry so much about the hy hypertension, it's hypotension that's the problem. And I probably wouldn't be given large dose fentanyl, that'd be the caveat. Curiously, ketamine may actually be a very good thing for ketamine these folks, be but very the literature is very early on that. I, I agree with what they were saying that fentanyl is probably much more important than lidocaine, which very rarely is given. And you have to give it really early, too. Most of these folks look terrible, and so you're tubing them quickly. You have to pre treat them about five to ten minutes before you tube them to get any benefit. And then that's largely theoretical. I rarely pre treat anybody. I don't, I don't know if other people routinely do it, but I hardly give them three to four mics per keg of fentanyl. I haven't. I mean, the idea of trying to tell the nurse, hey, I want you to push 400 mics of fentanyl, and like, well, what? what? I can't well, if they're, hypo, if they're hypotensive, I would not give fentanyl. I wouldn't do it. You're not going to worry about hypertension, right? That's what we're trying to avoid is hypertension. So I wouldn't do it in a hypotensive patient. If that patient's isolated head trauma, then I would I give would I give three or 400 of fentanyl? I think I don't know. I might. I mean, the the the, the, the I would probably be more between one and two hundred, though. To be honest with you. What it, what is? I guess my question is, what is the concern of giving four hundred? What's the, what are you worried about? An isolated head trauma with no no hypotension. What are you worried about? They might stop breathing. Yeah, but we're intubating them, right? So they might stop breathing. What else? Hypotension and what? Respiratory. Okay, well, you're intubating them, so what are you worried about with respiratory? I don't, I don't know that there's anything wrong with it. I'm, I'm just saying. Exactly. That. Everybody's like, I would never do it, but nobody can give a great reason why they wouldn't. Yeah. We're coming to you. Especially given the three minutes. And a brief. And as Brie pointed out, you, you can spread that out with, with smaller aliquots of 50 or, or even do a quick drip. But again, that, that means that you're waiting even longer to intubate them. And so the two things that, that causes bad outcomes for these folks is hypotension and hypoxia. And unfortunately, you're between a rock and a hard place because either of them will make dead brain tissue. And so you cannot allow, oh, wait, we're waiting on a pretreatment and they're desatting. That's completely unacceptable. You cannot do that. And so I, I think it's much easier to just tube them, take care of them, and then once they're intubated, it's easier to control their blood pressure um, and, and not worry as much about the, the pre. Uh, so unfortunately, we have that terrible question that I promised we would skip. This is related to, this is related. Oh, okay, so, sorry, um, you're bumped again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year on Twitter, we had a bunch of bleeders in a row, so I looked at the literature surrounding this, and there were two page papers that came out in Journal of Trauma in late 2014. <laughs> Um, one was a review of the original literature on giving lidocaine in the 1990s, and it actually said that there wasn't very good supporting evidence to start with in the 90s when this was first looked at. And then the second one actually recommends against doing it, and they say fentanyl. So most of the trauma literature is actually away from it. So I don't, I don't do it anymore. So, Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think fentanyl is emerging as a star, and lidocaine is getting poo-pooed. Yeah. All right, so PCC 